Hey everybody. I'm whoop. All right, sure. I'm oh, okay, there we go. I'm Dan. I work for a company called Snap Interactive. We make a dating website called AYI. Uh, and during this talk, I basically want to talk about how we built a recommendation engine that leveraged the Facebook graph to essentially recommend users to other users. So just a little bit of a background first about us. Uh, so the site's AYI. It stands for areyouinterested.com. Uh, we have more than 5 million monthly active users. Uh, we have over a billion pieces of data that we've essentially synced up from Facebook. And we're synced to over 25 million Facebook users. Uh, we receive about 1,000 real-time updates per minute from Facebook. So that's things like people adding interests, adding friends, and that kind of thing. Um, and we're a subscription-based service. So when you come to the site, basically the whole point is that it's completely frictionless. You can be on your phone, you click a button, and you install on Facebook, and you're already on the site, and you can look at dudes, basically. So the moment you come to the site, you see a guy. If you're interested in him, you, see, you say yes. If you're not, you say skip. And then he's informed of if you yesed him or not. So you sent him a like. If he likes you back, you guys make a match, and it's great. So when we started working on a recommendation engine, we essentially started with all these users who were essentially unconnected. So for the rest of the talk, I basically just want to be going over how we tried to connect these users through their Facebook data. And I'm specifically going to be talking about that through the perspective of these three users, uh, Rupert, Pam, and Blaine. So these three users are not real users, but clusters of similar users that I'm just using for convenience as personas. Uh, so Rupert, oops, sorry. Rupert is a slightly older dude. He is 55 to 60 years old. There's a 62% chance he has kids, 78% chance he's divorced. Uh, some of his favorite things are uh, James Patterson, country music, and spending time with his family, even if it, you know. Um, so he's looking for a committed relationship, basically. He's a little older, that's what he's looking to do. Um, so one of the weird things about him is he will look at dozens, if not hundreds of people per day, but only message a couple over the course of the day. So that's Rupert. Uh, this is, oh yeah, so his messages are, tend to be a lot longer than other users because he sort of assumes it's more of a correspondence rather than just an online message. Uh, this is Pam. She's a little younger, she's 25 to 30. She likes Pink, uh, the band, Dogs, and CSI. Uh, she could be looking for a relationship or something casual, uh, but she's also, like a lot of people, wary about meeting people online. Another thing that if you're a female on a dating website, you know that you probably receive a lot more messages from dudes than you send out which isn't necessarily a negative, it just means her core interaction is a little bit different. Instead of going straight to look for people, first she'll filter through her messages and then start sending stuff out. And this is Blaine. So Blaine is like 22 to 27 years old. Um, he likes the WWF, beer and the Knicks. Uh, he's probably not looking for a relationship. And he probably messages hundreds of people over the course of a month. He is just completely indiscriminate. He doesn't really care as long as you respond to him. There's also a pretty good chance he's drunk. <laughs> so the main reason I wanted to highlight these personas is because they all have very different interactions on the site, so they have to be recommended to in different ways. So this is just a snapshot from last Friday of how many likes people were sending. Uh, so here are, whoop, here are Pam and Rupert sending just a few likes out over that time period per hour. And here's Blaine, he's sending a lot more stuff. And if you notice, around 1 a.m. on Friday night, <laughs> sending even more. So the main thing I want to highlight here is that each one of these users has different core interactions. So when we're creating recommendations for them, basically, we can't just train a model on the likes they're sending out, because somebody like Rupert, he's, the data is too sparse. And somebody like Blaine, his data is useless. Uh, so a lot of other dating websites do a really good job of essentially collecting survey information on their users, but we don't do that. We try to get everything just from their Facebook data and what we can get without have them having to do anything. So essentially the data that we have at our disposal, oh, nope, wrong one, whatever. So when we're thinking about like making a recommendation, we have to think about at a very high level, what are the possible things that could match people up? Their attractiveness, their personality, their interests, their social network, their socioeconomic status, and how intelligent they are. So what we have access to specifically through Facebook and our users are things like their interests, their friends, open data sources that we can connect to it, demographic info, and site activity. Um, so using these things, we can try to fix each of the problems for those three personas that I've described. So here's Rupert again. 
When we're thinking about Rupert, we want to find people that he will actually want to message, so we have to find relevant users for him. But we also have to make sure that whoever he sends a message to really understands this is a big deal for him. So the way we try to do that is by connecting him with users who have the same interests as him. So that could just be a Facebook interest. And so we recommend these users, and then we see that there's already almost a 50% higher chance that he's going to reach out to users if they have an interest in common with him. And then in turn, there's about a 25% chance that those users will respond to him positively. So this is a sample of his interests. He likes things like jazz, poker, and that kind of thing. But that also, you know, and then we can connect him to other users through his interests, and it's great. But there's a few problems with Facebook interests. Uh, so if we look, for example, uh, a lot of Facebook interests are kind of garbage. Like, you have Kanye West, and another interest that means that is I heart Kanye West. And they both mean the same thing, but it's harder to match people up on them. Um, another thing is a lot of Facebook interests are just marketing. So some of the top matching interests on our sites are things like Shakira, Pink Floyd, U2, Discovery Channel, but then there's also Domino's Pizza, which is an issue for us, because nobody's really going to get a date over Domino's Pizza. <laughs> So what we decided to do to deal with that is essentially start with first these interests. And immediately you can see that there's certain interests that are similar. All these interests have to do specifically with jazz. So we essentially connected all the Facebook interests with external data sources to try to create larger clusters of interests similar to how Netflix does. So we can map these jazz interests to a larger, higher level grouping of interests that signify, in this case, jazz music. So we can hook Rupert up with all the other people that like jazz. And that's great. Um, and then we can serve that up to the user by showing in your profile what do you match with, what are their areas of interest, and that kind of thing. Excuse me. This is Pam. So Pam's core issue was that she has to know how to filter through her users as well as also trust the users that she's seeing. So the way we try to do that is by leveraging her Facebook network of friends. And while they might not all actually be friends of hers, they are mostly people that she knows offline, and in turn, she might trust people they know a little bit more. So the average Pam has about 240 Facebook friends, and we have found that if you have somebody in common, Pam would be about 71% more likely to actually respond to a message from you. So we can just put Pam on the network, connect her with all these users, and it's gravy. Um, but then the other thing is we have a lot of users on our site, so that means that we can connect her with even further networks of basically in her social network. So not only can we connect her with the friends of her friends, we can also connect them with people that they're connected to. So this is just a graph of the likelihood of people to match up based on their social distance. Um, so blue is jesses that are sent that are not reciprocated, whereas the green is matches. And so you can see about half of all, oh, got to get these buns down. So half of all uh, yeses are, not reciprocated when they're not in the social network, but of the matches, most of them fall within three steps. So this would be like a Facebook friend, this would be a friend of a friend, and so on and so on. And so most matches occur within about four steps of somebody, at least on our site. So I think that's cool. Boom. And then the way we serve these insights up to a user is through their friends of friends. So we can just highlight, essentially, who are the friends you have in common, and this is the user that we're suggesting to you. Boom. Uh, so this is Blaine. So Blaine's behavior essentially creates very noisy data. He just is, gets in the way a lot. If we would put him as a node in the network and we tried to traverse over him, it would just mess everything up. So what we have to do essentially is figure out a good way to change that attribute on his node so we know that when we see it, to deal with it differently. And so rather than putting a new node on the graph like we did with the other users, instead we're using, going to try to capture his behavior by getting all the different ratings for people. In this case, we're going to try to figure out like things like pickiness, how attractive a user is, and their relative response rate. Uh, so we know for Blaine, he's not a picky guy. He will basically message anybody. Um, but he's also relatively good looking, so we want to make sure that's reflected as well. Uh, so we do this on an ongoing basis for all of our users, so we know what to do with recommendations. And just as an example of that, this is how picky people are by age. Uh, you can see women, pretty picky all the time. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, and whereas, so you can imagine that Pam would be somewhere around here. Uh, here is where Blaine would be. He's younger and he doesn't care. <laughs> and then Rupert would be somewhere up here. 
So then after, so with all these other things, so we start again with like an empty network. These are all of our users again. And we want to start layering these inferences and these connections on top of things so we can start developing recommendations. So first, I'm just going to resize these nodes based off of user's attractiveness. So a smaller node is a less attractive user, a larger node is a more attractive user. Uh, then we can start connecting people through their interests. Then we can start connecting people through these higher level interests. And then we can start connecting them through their Facebook friends. And so this is kind of what we're working with when we start making recommendations for people. So the whole point of building this out is so we can essentially make a recommendation for somebody as if it was an offline recommendation. So for Pam, for example, you can imagine like if she was to meet somebody offline, just in the real world somewhere, like maybe she'd be going out to a baseball game, because she likes baseball. She sees a good looking guy, and she thinks to herself, hey, that's a good looking guy, so she asks her friend, do you know that good looking guy? Her friend says, yeah, I'll set you guys up. They go on a date, it's great. So what we can do here is try to mimic and model that exact same behavior, but on our site. So we start with Pam. There's Pam. Um, so the first thing we want to do is get rid of anybody who's not attractive enough for Pam. So that's them. Uh, then the next thing we want to do is get rid of anybody who doesn't have anything in common with Pam. So that filters down the list as well. And then we want to get rid of anybody who's not within Pam's social network. So that gets rid of a lot of people as well. So then that leaves us with a few users that we can directly recommend for her. These guys. And then we can serve that up, and not only can we tell her that these people are attractive, but we can also say, hey, this guy knows a lot of people that you know, you have a lot of things in common, and he's pretty good looking. Uh, yeah, and that's basically how we do it. That's it. Thanks, guys.